Hi guys, my name's Andy and welcome to the first video in this series of strumming guitar videos. Um, in this video we're going to be covering basic on the beat strumming and also really importantly how to play along to the record with absolutely any song that you would ever want to play along to. We're going to cover the basics and I'm going to give you song examples and also we have a drum track that you guys can practice playing along to with what I show you in this video so that you can practice the exercises that I have for you. Um, so first of all, to understand about strumming, we have to understand what a beat is, what are bars and beats. Some of this I have gone through before in other videos, but I just want to, as I say, cover the absolute basics to make sure you have a fundamental understanding of this. And even if you're maybe at a higher level where you can do some strumming, this video is going to be useful for you because of the extra things that we're going to be covering a little later on to make sure that you can get all the concepts that we're going to be doing throughout this beginner strumming course. So, what is a beat? Well, a beat is a pulse through the music, a regular pulse. And, for example, if your favourite song comes on and you nod your head to it or you tap your foot to it, you're probably nodding your head to the beat. There doesn't have to be something playing on the beat for it to be there, but it runs throughout probably every song you have ever heard. Even if it feels like there's maybe no regular pulse, it, everything you can hear is probably to a count. And 99.9% .9 of pop songs are to a count of four. So if we have a regular pulse, we can put that to a count of one, two, three, four. And it is this count of four that we call a bar. Now, the simplest strumming pattern that we can do whenever we're playing along to any song is probably just one strum per chord. Really handy whenever you learn a new song to just strum each of the chords that are listed on your chord sheet once just to get a feel for it. I'll be covering how to change between different chords in, in different videos. Here I'm just focusing on the strumming. But if we just, um, for this first video, the first two chords that are in my beginner's course are E and A. So we have our first E major chord, which should be the first chord that you've learned if you've taken lessons with me. And we're just going to strum this on beat one to start with, to a slow count, to my count, and then I'd like to practice this along to the drum track, and you can even practice it along to a real song, which is Buffalo Springfield, for what it's worth. As I'm sure if a few of you will know, you've, you may have seen that video. But as I say, this course is going to kind of continue from that video, and we're just covering the basics here. So, um, for an as an example, we have two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Every beat one that happens, I'm strumming an E chord. And that would be written as a line, which is our bar line, an E, and then another bar line at the end. So we have line, E, line. That represents one bar of E. But all of these strumming patterns that we cover, we're only given them for one bar, and then we have to get the concept that these repeat for however many bars end up being in the song. And when we strum once per bar, these are called spreads. So this is a spread. One, two, three, four. A spread spreads throughout the whole bar is, is the way to think about it. Now, how do we hear straight away? Let's, let's get us playing along to some real music rather than just along to me. How do we hear the beat in a song? Well, of course, as I've just said, if you're nodding your head to a song, then you're nodding your head on the beat, okay? It's, it's more than likely. But it it's not always as easy as that to hear it, especially when we're wanting to play along and we have distractions such as chord changes or you're wanting to funk up your strumming at all, okay? So uh, what I have here is a really simple drum beat so that we can hear this in real music. And we have a two bar counting, which counts one, two, one, two, three, four. And then we have a simple drum beat, which basically is kick, snare, kick, snare. And this sounds like this. Two. So this is our counting. One, two, three, four. Kick, snare. Kick, snare. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, 
two. And as a song example that this drum beat would happen in, I always think of Back in Black. Something to nod your head to, you know. Okay? And those two sounds always, always, always happen on the same beats. I can't stop my drum kit here. There we go. Um, so we have the kick drum starting the low note, the, the bass drum, on beat one and three. One. Three, a really low thud, which is called the bass drum. And then we have a snare sound, which is happening on beats two and four. One, two, three, four. And that always happens. Even if the drum kit gets more complex, those fundamentals still tend to be there. They maybe, you know, happen a little bit after the beat and a, a little bit before it, maybe with the kick drum. But the snare always happens on two and four. And this is how you can hear the rhythm in a song. Hear the beat, hear the count in a song. You need to listen to the drums. Even if the drums are really quiet, you're not going to hear the guitars likely if you're strumming away all, all loud. There's also a symbol on this um, drum kit, this drum loop that I've provided for you guys. Um, if you'd like to hear it, I'm going to leave a link in the top corner for you guys to click or down in the description. It'll be on another YouTube video so you can stay on YouTube and and cover all these strumming videos. There'll also be a playlist of all these videos. But yes, first of all, there'll be a symbol every two bars. So we've got a count of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Symbol. And that you can use just as a checkpoint, just to make sure you are actually strumming on the beat. So first of all, just take an E major chord. If you're a little bit more advanced, you could take a bar of E and a bar of A when you're practicing this in your own time, or any two or four chords that you want, really. But I do want you to get the concept that we want a short phrase, two chords, one chord, or maximum number of four chords, and then repeat them. Because if you're getting used to these chord changes and you're just going from any chord to any chord, it's not that useful because real songs don't do that. Real songs repeat and that's how they eat up time. It's how they make, uh, make time seem to go faster when you listen to songs. That's why we listen to songs on car journeys and whatnot. So as an example, I'm just going to play an E chord on every bar. Just on beat one to start off with. One, two, three, just an E chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. And if you're really confident, you can change from an E. One, two, three, two, and A. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Which some of you have done before in the Buffalo Springfield song. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, last time. Three, four. One, two, three, four, and stop there. So that drum track lasts a couple of minutes, which is an exercise you need to be able to do. You need to be able to keep those chord changes going on beat one for a full two minutes. If you can't do that, then you can learn as many chords as you want, but you're not going to be able to play along to real songs, okay? So we need you to do this for every strumming pattern that you learn. We need to learn to repeat it. But let's make it a bit more interesting than that. Let's go straight for every beat. So every time you hear kick, snare, kick, snare, we want to be playing a down strum. Has to be down strums. We always have down strums on the beat as a rule with strumming. Doesn't matter what strumming pattern you're going for, how complex it may be, I can guarantee that down strums will be happening on the beat, okay? It's really, really rare that that doesn't happen. So let's have a demonstration of this. Two, one. Two, three, a bar of E, one, two, three, and a bar of A, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, E, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and end on the E, pause there, good. So if you could play along to me, great, great stuff, okay, you're doing really well.
This does not want to stop at all. <laughs> um, if you're playing on to me, great. That's exactly what we're wanting to do. But keep practicing that skill because it doesn't improve, as with all these skills of learning guitar or learning anything, it won't improve unless you work on it. And what we're listening out for is to get that one sound. We're trying to make sure that we're getting the sound of our strum at exactly the same time as, um, as, the, as the drum beats hit, as the kick and the snare. Now, if that was a little too quick for you, you need to make sure that you're playing just one strum per bar, but being really strict with yourself that you're playing on beat one. And remember, when you come back to the E, or if you want to stay on the E a little bit more, you have that symbol on beat one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, symbol to use as a checkpoint to make sure that you're on beat one. But if nothing else, if you really are you know, stuck and, and you're thinking, oh, these chords are a, are, are a bit too much for me. Or if you're kind of good at changing chords, but you're thinking, how do you tell? How, how do I know if I'm in time? Because I, I can't see you guys playing, okay? It's, this is a one-way thing. You can, of course, freely send me videos. Check out the Facebook page, um, leads, forward slash Leeds Guitar Tutor for the Facebook. But how can you know yourself whether you are in time or not. This is how. We're going to go along to the drum beat again, but we're just going to mute our strings. With your left hand, we're going to put your hand flat over all your strings. We're not playing a chord, but don't press down to the wood. Just touch the strings very lightly, and we get this thud sound. About halfway down your guitar next, down low. It will still sound fine. We just want this thud so we can hear what your right hand is doing or just your strumming hand. And what we want to hear is one sound between this and your kick snare. So if we're hearing kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, you're doing this right. If we hear two sounds, if you hear kick, snare, kick, snare, and they're out of sync, then you're a little bit behind or a little bit ahead. If you're a little bit ahead or behind, whichever it is, the best thing to do really is to just stop altogether and try and count in again. What we're encouraging the skill of, of here is joining into the music. So listening, predicting where that count is, and then joining in. Rather than kind of, the other way to do this is just play over the drum kit. So, or the song that you're going along to. You put it on, but actually you're there in your own little world playing it whenever you like, okay? How do we tell? Everything happens at the same time, which is why we've got such a simple drum kit to play along to. So if you have listen again, again, just to demonstrate, your fail-safe method for any new strumming pattern, really handy, you know, if you're going for a harder strumming pattern, let's hear what this right hand's doing. Just mute your strings flat against, and remember pressing on really light. If you're getting this sound, press on lighter. Simple as that. Make sure you're covering all the strings. So two, one, two, three, and we hear that. Two, three, four. And if you just listen to that sound, my hand and the beat happen at the same time. If I'm a little bit behind, It kind of straight away just sounds bad, but you hear, if you listen really carefully, you can hear two sounds. Listen. Purposefully out of time. And what would likely happen there is you'll just drift and drift and drift and it won't sound good. So you need to be really strict. Maybe tap your foot as well. Tapping your left foot if you're a right-handed guitarist is really handy. Then your guitar's not bouncing up and down. So the opposite side, the knee that's not got your guitar on it. And we're just making sure that we can hear that one sound. And therefore, a really important point is to play in time and to keep good time yourself, you are not programming yourself to stay the same all the way through. We're actually not keeping a consistent tempo when we're playing along to a drum beat, when we're playing along to something else. When you're playing along to something else, we're actually speeding up and slowing down a little bit the whole time, and we're trying to stay within the, the good area, the, what we call the pocket of the song. So 
if you see a sound wave, there are spikes for um, for every hit. So say this this drum kit here would be like spike, spike, spike for kick, snare. And if you're in the area where it spikes, it sounds good because we're not machines. We can't go 100 BPM, Andy, and just stay at that. And if I stay exactly the same, I'm going to drift a little later or be a little sooner. Of course, when if, if I'm just practicing on myself, unaccompanied, I'm trying to keep the best time that I can. I'm trying to stay the same. But for this exercise, for playing along to something else, and this will be the same when you go do the same exercise along to Buffalo Springfield for what it's worth, the first song in my beginner's course, which is just a bar of E or a bar of A, or any of the songs, any song you ever want to play along to, you've got to make sure that everything is happening at the same time. That kind of includes pressing down on your chord at the same time as your strum. If I'm strum, two, three, four, and then I change chord early before that beat, that's going to knock you out of time. Of course, for most people, that when you're first learning, your uh, chord hands are a little slow, maybe. But often, when we get better, when we practice this stuff, most people for the higher level strumming patterns are actually ahead. They're ahead of the beat. They're too fast. Imagine being able to play guitar too fast, right? That'd be nuts. But it happens within a few weeks, people get the hang of this, and then they're racing ahead. Every song some people learn, they, they learn it way too fast. You know, people go for Wonderwall. And the, and the way ahead, you know, everything's rushed and therefore the changes are, are sloppy. But if you can play along to the record with near as damn to every song that you ever learn, it eradicates that and gives you good time. And it means that you'll be able to play along to anyone else as well. It's the best practice for jamming with other people, which must be something that at least some of you want to do at some point. The best practice for that is playing along to the record. And when people have been taking and um, learning online like you guys for YouTube videos that haven't had guitar lessons and people, you know, private students come to me and say, you know, I just feel like something's missing. I can play a few riffs, but they never sound finished. They never sound right. I can't play a whole song all the way through. It's normally the fact that they haven't learned the skill of playing along to the record that is holding them back from improving anymore. Now, just one final thing, we're near the end of the video now, and we'll begin some higher level strumming patterns um, in this playlist of videos that I'll make, and they'll be on my website at andyguitar.co.uk, along with a full layout of, of all these strumming patterns, really easy to find. Um, but one last thing, when you're playing along to the record, you cannot join in straight away as soon as you hear the first chord, because as soon as you've pressed play, the song started. So whatever the first chord in, in your song is, it's gone. Here we have to bear in mind that pop music repeats. Any guitar riffs are going to repeat. And we don't play the first repetition of it. We don't play the first time it happens. We play the second time it happens. We play from the repetition. So if you've got a chord sequence of E, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, and it just repeats from there, the first sound you hear in the song will be the E chord. And then the second sound you hear in the song will be the A chord. So you join in from the next E, which you can tell when that happens because you can now hear the beat in a song because you're listening to the drums. You can hear the pulse, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And if it's a two bar chord sequence, that's where you would join in. Um, so yeah, thanks for checking out this video. So straight away, the first thing you want to do is get right over there, click this link to, uh, to the drum track for this level one strumming just here in the beat. If you think you've got it, if you think you've mastered it, get straight on to level two where we'll be talking about the off beat, which are the ands in between the count. So we can play one and two and, which is the gateway to all your higher level strumming, but also bear in mind that any song you ever learn can be simplified down to just, just playing on the beat.